Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to our TNT. Please subscribe to the channel if you get a chance and uh, Merry Christmas. Hmm. So, uh, big story today. So we'll get stuck straight into that. And this is sort of how it emerged. And we'll start with some of the international coverage. Uh, CNN reported at least 10 killed in explosion at Tyre Firework Factory. Now, of course, the situation was updated later, but we'll just check some of this story. And it shows that the incident happened in Supanburi, just north of Bangkok there. And the story says at least 10 people, that'll be updated soon, have died following an explosion at a fireworks depot in central Thailand and it was not immediately clear what caused the explosion which happened around 4 p.m. local time uh, in Supanburi province north of Thailand's capital Bangkok. And the story goes on to say that fireworks accidents are not uncommon in Thailand. At least 12 people were killed and 121 injured in an explosion in July last year at a fireworks warehouse in the southern village of Mu No. Now that Narati Wat explosion, although it killed fewer people, a total of 12. I remember the video of that uh, just showing many, many blocks just completely flattened. When these fireworks factories go up, they really go up. Now let's, uh, let's check some later coverage on this story. We now go to thaipbsworld.com. At least 23 killed in firework factory explosion in Supanburi. And that toll remains the same toll as we wake up this morning. At least 23 people have been killed, several others injured in an explosion at a fireworks factory in Suantang subdistrict of Supanburi. The identities of the victims have not been released. The factory is licensed and is in an isolated location far from any residential areas, thank heavens. And the cause of the explosion is not yet known, but investigators are at the scene. And you can see there's nothing left of that factory whatsoever except uh, a few steel pillars and Nation Thailand reporting deadly explosion at fireworks factory leaves all 23 workers dead in Supanburi and you can see that aerial photograph there with the area completely flattened and we've now got some video also shared by Nation Thailand which we'll share during uh, the read of this particular story. And police and local officials said the accident happened around 3.30pm at the factory in Ban Khoi Nam. Authorities believe the 23 workers were assembling the fireworks when suddenly there was an explosion flattening the factory and killing all of them. Rescue officials said the explosion blew up their bodies and body parts were retrieved from about 50 metres away and even in the rice fields. They said it was hard to identify the victims. And the Prime Minister, who's currently in Davos at the World Economic Forum, uh, expressed his condolences to the families of the victims and said he was shocked by the high number of fatalities. And Seta also instructed the Interior Ministry to update him about the tragedy every hour. And the factory had received its annual license on August the 24th last year. And the government spokesperson said Supanburi officials and those from concerned government agencies were investigating the cause of the explosion. And uh, Nation Thailand was the source of the video footage there on their YouTube channel. And once again, a preventable incident uh, leading our program. And once again, doing our program from Chip Fair Lele Cafe here at the Taimung Beach in Panga. Now, the next story, uh, I saw the headline and I thought, oh, I better read that. A bit disappointing in the actual content, but there were a few things in there I thought we should actually mention. We go to BangkokPost.com. Strategy to achieve tourism targets revealed. Well, not really very interesting. But uh, here are a few comments, and it starts with the Tourism and Sports Ministry said the target of 3.5 trillion baht in revenue and 40 million foreign arrivals this year, set by the Prime Minister, remains a challenge, but it plans to drive spending and longer stays through soft power products, events and safety measures. So a few things in that. Uh, looks like they're aiming to get the same number of foreign tourists this year as they did back in 2019. A lofty goal. And they're going to use this soft power products, this term, this buzzword that they seem to have picked up on, and they just seem to be flogging it to death. Soft power being things like Muay Thai, things like uh, Thai music, uh, Thai TV, 
uh, things that uh, people sort of see on the side, but it's not as in your face as a, a temple or a particular tourist attraction. So they're really leaning heavily into this soft power product. Uh, then of course they're mentioning safety measures as well. Enough said about that already today. And the Tourism and Sports Minister said to reach the goal, it would require 40 million foreign tourists and 200 to 220 million domestic trips. So a big job this year is going to be encouraging the locals to travel, uh, not just encouraging foreigners to visit uh, and buy all those expensive airfares. Moving on to our next story, which is a bit of an update on Tax and Shinawat. And ThaiPBSWorld.com reporting that prison officials say Taxon eligible for parole. Surprise, surprise. The former Prime Minister, Taxon Shinawat, is eligible for parole, which may see him freed potentially without having to spend a single night in jail, despite the eight year prison should be sentence handed down on him for corruption and abuse of power according to justice authorities. They also confirmed that Taxon is still being treated at the Police General Hospital, and they said a representative of the Ombudsman met Taxon while recently visiting the 14th floor of the hospital. So it looks like he's actually there. And Taxon ended his 15-year self-exile last August and was sentenced by the Supreme Court to eight years in jail for corruption and abuse of power. The sentence was subsequently reduced to one year by royal commutation. And only hours after being taken to the Bangkok Remand prison to serve his term, Taxon was moved to the Police General Hospital for health problems and has remained there since. And the story says a Deputy General for the Corrections Department told the same press conference that given his age and health condition, Taxon's eligible to parole under a new regulation that's going to take effect soon. And justice authorities have said that the new regulation is designed to relieve prison overcrowding and not to benefit any specific individual. Under the regulation, prisoners who are 70 years old and over, handicapped and suffering from serious illnesses, are eligible for parole. And there's been speculation that Taxon could be out on parole as early as February, meaning he would not be transferred back to prison to serve his term. Everything going to plan. Now let's see if there's uh, any other politicians behaving badly. And Saksayam found guilty of violating law handing government projects to his own company. This is the former transport ministry in the Prayut government. And the Constitutional Court found the former transport minister guilty of concealing his shares and ownership of a construction company that won many projects from his ministry. Dear oh dear. And yesterday, the Constitutional Court judges voted 7 to 1, ruling that Saksayam did indeed own Buri Charon Construction, as alleged by 54 opposition MPs. And the court ruled that Saksayam's status as Transport Minister was retroactively terminated from March 3 last year, when the court received the case for review. And the accusations against the former Transport Minister emerged during a no-confidence debate against the then Prime Minister Prayut chan cha's government. The opposition claimed that Saksayam used a nominee to run the construction firm, allowing it to secure projects from the Transport Ministry without addressing potential conflicts of interest. I wonder if those projects are going to be revoked or whether any money is going to be returned to the government. And despite the court's verdict, no political ban was imposed on Saksayam as the complaint lodged by the 54 opposition MPs solely sought his disqualification as a cabinet member. And the former minister emerged from the court yesterday with an impassive expression and told reporters that he accepted the ruling. And we look forward to his uh, upcoming apology. But he's not the only Pumjai Thai politician to be in disgrace at the moment. Nation Thailand reporting last week, Supreme Court bans three ex-Pumjai Thai MPs from politics for 10 years. And again, this was last week. And the Supreme Court found three former Pumjai Thai MPs guilty of severe breach of parliamentary ethics by allowing others to use their card to vote on their behalf and banned them from contesting elections for 10 years. 
no such ban has been placed on the former Transport Minister at this time, but that action may happen in the future. But back to these other three Pumjai Thai Party members, well, as you can see, named and shamed there in that article from Nation Thailand last week. So a bit of a spotlight on former Pumjai Thai MPs and uh, the behaviour of some of their MPs as they leveraged the situation they had. They had 61 seats and without those Pumjai Thai MPs, the Prayut government wouldn't have been able to maintain power. And as we know, all sorts of deals were done, which we've discussed uh, many times before. OK, so thank you very much for watching today. Hopefully you've enjoyed the program. Don't forget to subscribe. Big thumbs up to our sponsor, Five Star Marine at fivestarmarinepuket.com. Fully booked at the moment, but get in early for bookings over the next three or four months while the weather's still good here in Thailand. Kids heading off to university. Thanks for watching today. See you tomorrow.